Virgo. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for December of 2021. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kell Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mikos in San Francisco. And, you know, Virgo, there's a lot of emphasis on home life in your horoscope this month. You'll find out as you uh, listen to what we have for you today. And so, um, if that brings up questions for you about relationships with family members like kids or parents or siblings or people that you live with that feel like family that share a home with you, then you might want a natal and transit reading to answer those questions, or you might even want a star child reading uh, to look into your kid's chart. And if you want either of those things, you can find a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, Virgo, uh, Uranus and Saturn have been traveling in a square the, all year this year. And um, Uran uh, Saturn is here traveling through your sixth house. It's on about a three, two to three year journey through your sixth house. And the sixth house is the house of work, health, service, and personal organization. So if you're feeling kind of under some pressure to get more organized at home or at work, or if you have been putting a lot of effort into um, designing systems that will help life run more smoothly in those areas, this Saturn transit is probably why. Now, meanwhile, Uranus has been traveling along through your ninth house, causing some pretty big changes and new, possibly disruptive ideas and thoughts in the arena of the bigger picture. In other words, your philosophy of life, your approach to life, your worldview. And so Uranus has really been shaking it up in that territory while Saturn is battening down the hatches in this territory, and the two of them have been stressing each other out all year. So if you've been trying to get practical work done, but keep on getting interrupted by shifts in your whole perspective on life, this stuff would be why. And in fact, if you have something in your chart, anything at all, not just your sun or, or moon, but anything at all in fixed signs, meaning Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, or Taurus, specifically between 6 and 13 degrees, then you are definitely feeling this. You can find out a lot more about it in the video that we have made about it, Saturn sextile, uh, Saturn square Uranus, in our December news playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. Well, Julia, I think you've got some news for the Virgos of the world about Mercury, Mars, and Venus. What's that? Well, Virgo, I'll begin with Mercury. That's your ruling planet. And it's a planet that represents communication and mentation. Wherever Mercury is that month is where you're going to be doing most of your thinking. So Mercury is going to start the month in your fourth house of family, home, and the past. It's going to be here for the first 13 days too. So when Mercury's in this house, you could be spending a lot of your time thinking about your housing situation. You know, is there any way that you can make it better? Or are you planning on moving to the next place? Place. You could be strategizing and planning anything that has to do with your domestic life. This could also be a time of increased communication with the people you live with, as well as your family members. And since the fourth house represents the past, your mind could be preoccupied with past matters that may be somehow affecting the present. Then on December 13th, Mercury enters your fifth house. This is a super fun house. It's the house of games. It's the house of creativity. It's also the house of children. So for the rest of the month with Mercury in the fifth house, you're going to want to, uh, you know, occupy your mind with more fun things. You know, if you play any type of games, like if they're word games or video games or games that use strategy or your mind, you might find that you're doing a lot more of that this month. Um, the fifth house also represents children. So there might, this might be a time of increased communication with your children, if you have any. And, um, since the fifth house also represents creativity, if you do any creative writing, this is a wonderful time for it too. Then Mars, the planet of action and activity, starts the month in your third house of siblings, a communication, as well as local surroundings. So for the first 13 days with Mars in this house, you might feel sort of driven to take lots of little short trips around your neighborhood, maybe take some weekend getaways. Um, now Mars can be a little bit conflict prone. So this can be a time of more 
flare-ups with your siblings or even with your neighbors. Now, Mars can also be competitive too, so this can definitely have a keeping up with the Joneses kind of feel to it. Maybe you and your neighbors are getting a little bit more competitive with each other. Then on the 13th, Mars is going to enter your fourth house of family and home. So with Mars in the fourth house, you could be expending a lot of energy on the home front. The best, way, the best thing to do with this transit is to just get involved with lots of home projects, you know, clean, organize your Tupperware, paint a room, just kind of see if you can fix things or hang paintings. Um, because Mars in the fourth, if you if you get a little bit pent up and don't release the energy in concert, excuse me, constructive ways, it can be a time of uh, more conflict with the people you live with, possibly even with family as well too. Now, Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships starts the month in your fifth house. Uh, again, that's the really fun house. It also can represent dating too. So this is a lovely time um, to kind of go out there and go on a few dates with people. Uh, Venus is such a pleasure-loving planet, and the fifth house is such a fun house that this combination really means that, you know, you can get a little bit more fun in your life, maybe go out a little bit more, um, maybe also uh, get very creative too, because the fifth house is a creative house and Venus is a creative planet. Now, on the 19th, she is going to be slowing down and going retrograde, and this cycle lasts six whole weeks. So it's going to take us all the way to the very, very end of January on January 29th. So whenever Venus goes retrograde or any planet goes retrograde, it's a time of reviewing whatever that planet represents. And for Venus, that's relationships. So for most of December as well into January, you could be reviewing your current relationship through a fifth house lens. You might be thinking, is this partner the right person to have children with? Because the fifth house represents children. You could also be wondering, am I having enough fun with my partner? Do we have enough things in common like hobbies or do we do we you know you know that sort of saying the couples that play together stay together well you might be wondering do we play together enough now if you are single and dating this might be a time where especially with Venus retrograde you might have sort of one opinion about one date and maybe that gets switched to something different so you know um, go out date and have a good time but you might find that you're you know reviewing or maybe even going back on some of your previous feelings so just kind of keep it very open. And for everybody, over the next six weeks when Mercury, uh, when Venus is in retrograde, it can be a time of running into your exes again. Maybe they're calling you on the phone, or maybe you just run into them randomly on the street. So definitely be prepared for that. Mm. Well, I've got a couple of moons to tell you about. The first one happens early in the month, December 3rd. And both of these moons, well, the first one is an eclipse. So uh, both of these moons uh, have to do with the Sagittarius Gemini axis, which is communication. It has to do with assumptions versus logic, um, the big picture versus the details. And um, the first moon being a solar eclipse is uh, an occasion for looking at our shadow. We're going to have to look at the things that we would rather put behind us that we would rather not see. A solar eclipse in particular can show in your behavior. So it's very important to watch your behavior during a solar eclipse. Um, so this one happening on the third, you should definitely uh, watch out for it for several days before and several days after. And um, the sun and the moon gathering together here in Sagittarius, we're calling this one heel breaches by how you act on your beliefs. This moon, even without being an eclipse, is a very stressful moon. There are a lot of factors woven in with it. And um, the, the major theme is know what you believe and, uh, and act on it, but only in the best possible way with a view to healing. And, uh, and don't try to press your beliefs on others. And this is really a theme that's been showing up in the eclipses for the past year and a half as the nodes travel along through Gemini and Sagittarius. So this one may be a little bit tough. The moon coming later on in the month is going to be easier. It's happening on 18th. Uh, right here in Gemini, up in your 10th house, opposite the sun in your 4th house. 
So because the solar eclipse landed in your fourth house, you may experience it mostly in the context of your family or your home life. It could be very emotional. It could be uh, an occasion for bad behavior on the part of you or family members. Um, and, uh, and so definitely there are some watch outs there. And, uh, and then with this one being in the 10th house, it's going to bring up career themes for you instead. Uh, this particular moon is a lot smoother and easier. It has a wonderful harmonious trine to Jupiter. And so those themes of looking at what you believe and communicating your beliefs to other people, but without trying to press them on other people and really being the communicator and listening and hearing and sympathizing with what other people are telling you. So this second moon we're calling broadened minds gain bigger hearts. And it really is an occasion to more easily expand uh, and, and become more tolerant and open-minded towards other people's experience. So then the last thing I want to tell you about is the seasonal change. And uh, we see that the sun has been moving along through Sagittarius, your fourth house. So it's been lighting up the arena of home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. And on the 21st, it moves into the fifth house. And there's been a, a gradual shift over the course of the month from um, the fourth house arena to the fifth house arena, which means at the beginning of the month, there's been much more focus on your home environment and, uh, and how to make it a better, nicer nest for yourself and the people you share it with. And then the shift has been towards the fifth house, which represents your children, your creativity, and your fun. So this is where the emphasis is in the latter part of the month. Now, to you, being Virgo, work may actually seem like fun, and it may seem like that is a place that you want to expand into. And if your creative projects could use a little bit of structuring, well, this will be the time to do it while the sun is moving through this house from the 30 days onward from December 21st. Well, Virgo, that's the stuff that we have for you. Hope you enjoyed it. You can always find our horoscopes on our website, pandoraastrology.com, in the horoscopes tab. And if you check out the readings and services tab, you'll find that you can get a reading with either Julia or me. And uh, classes are available on our website too. And so is the monthly forecast. And until next time, We'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.